I grew up in rural Michigan, and I was raised on fairy tales. My parents or my older sibling would read them to me at night before bed, and I watched a pretty steady stream of Disney movies. And in my spare time, I played princess. I lived in anticipation of one day having my own fairy tale and my own happily ever after. It was while I was in college, working hard to earn my degree, that I heard about this thing called the Appalachian Trail. For those of you who don't know what that is, it's a continuous footpath from Georgia to Maine. And yes, that's over 2,000 miles long. Somehow, I got it in my head that I wanted to walk from one end to the other. I wanted to through-hike it. There was only one problem with this idea, and that was the fact that I'd never actually gone backpacking. <laughs> in fact, when I was in college, I weighed 200 pounds and couldn't even jog around a track. However, these details didn't matter to me because I was intent on making this my adventure. So in May of 2003, the day after I graduated college, I stood on a mountain in northern Georgia and headed north with my backpack. Four months later, I arrived in Maine and completed the Appalachian Trail. I went home from this journey into this realm that I had no prior knowledge of trying to figure out what was next, because this had radically changed everything I thought about life. My parents were very patient during this time in my life when I realized that I much preferred sleeping on the ground and walking through the woods all day, carrying everything I owned on my back to more normal activities, such as hanging out with my friends or using furniture. I'm sure that they were absolutely ecstatic in the spring when I announced that I had finally found a job. It was in Montana, in Glacier National Park. And so I loaded up my Jeep with the few things that I owned, and I headed out west with one stop, Virginia. I'm sure pretty much everyone in this room realizes, with a basic grasp of US geography, that Virginia is not on the way to Montana from Michigan. <laughs> However, I could not imagine going out west without saying goodbye to my beloved mountains of the east. So I went to this town called Damascus, Virginia. The Appalachian Trail runs right through the center of town. There are white blazes on the sidewalk. And every year, Damascus, Virginia plans their town festival around when most of the northbound through hikers are coming through. And hikers from past years come back and they have a reunion. So I was there spending time with people that I had hiked with the prior year when I met a man who was hiking north that year on the AT. And we all know where this goes, right? <laughs> girl has adventure, girl meets boy having similar adventure. Love at first sight, it's the Prince Charming part of the fairy tale. He finished the Appalachian Trail, I went to Montana, and after that, we decided to hike the Pacific Crest Trail together. And the Pacific Crest Trail is 2,660 plus miles starts at the Mexican border here in Southern California and ends up at the Canadian border in Washington. Subsequently, we then hiked the Continental Divide from Canada back to Mexico through Montana, Idaho, Wyoming, Colorado, and New Mexico. Having crisscrossed the country three times, we decided it was probably time to move on to the next part of Happily Ever After. So flash forward to 2010, I was married, I had a career, we lived in a great apartment in a cute little city, and we had a loose draft of where we were going in life, but there was one problem, I wasn't happy. And I wasn't sure why, this ha was a huge crisis for me, I was almost 30, and I had finally achieved absolutely everything that my fairy tale had ever included and I was miserable. It took a lot of tears and introspection and the love and support of my husband to figure out the reason. And the reason was, I was living someone else's fairy tale. I was patterning my life after this ideal that had been held up to me since I was a small child, but that wasn't what made me happy. So we divorced, I sold everything I owned, I quit my job, and I went hiking. I went right back to the mountains along the Pacific Crest Trail, and I spent the summer hiking in Washington and Oregon. 
I regained my happiness. But eventually, it snows in the mountains, and you have to go home. <laughs> so back in Michigan at my parents' home, I again searched my soul, attempting to figure out what it was I wanted out of life. And I thought through a lot of different options and career paths. But each and every daydream ended with the same scenario. I was in my tent, sleeping on the ground, and eating lots of guilt-free chocolate. <laughs> so I finally realized that I needed to embrace this conclusion, that what I really wanted in life was to be hiking. But I didn't want to just walk back and forth across the country. What I wanted to do was make this my life. I wanted to immerse myself so completely in this lifestyle that I would no longer be living on autopilot, that this would be my life. And the first step in doing that, I decided, was to hike the Pacific Crest Trail again. But this time, I would hike it alone, and I would attempt to hike it faster than anyone else had ever hiked it before. So this was not in order to lessen my time in the wilderness, but to intensify it and to face my fears. So in 2013, on June 8th, I stood at the Mexican border in Southern California, just south of San Diego, and looked north. And this time, I knew what the terrain would be like, because I'd hiked it before. However, what I didn't know was if I could actually do what I was there to do. Because I didn't know whether I could physically hike 40 to 55 miles each and every day, day after day, for 60 days, without ever taking a day off. I didn't know what it would be like to encounter a mountain lion face to face in the middle of the night by headlamp while I was walking. I didn't know what it would be like to ford a river that, could thre that threatened to sweep me away, also by the light of my headlamp in the dark. I didn't know what it would be like to be in so much pain that it took all of my mental focus to keep moving forward. I had no idea that I would lose 20 pounds. And despite all of these things, the amazing thing was that I was absolutely madly in love with what was going on. I was so happy. Because every morning when I woke up, regardless of how high the mountain passes were, whether it was going to be 120 degrees in the desert, whether there was going to be 30 miles without water, or whether there were going to be ferocious bugs eating me alive, I was going to be hiking. And every night when I crawled into my tent, whether it was pitched in nice soft sand or on a pile of rocks or wedged into some huckleberry bushes, I could revel in the success of living my fairy tale each and every moment that day. As time went on, the success became less about achieving this overall speed record and more about facing each day's challenges head on, about overcoming them on my own with God's help, and about embracing this life that I had chosen for myself. One of the greatest lessons I learned out there was acceptance. Because the kaleidoscope of human emotion doesn't cease just because you're in the woods. I had to learn to accept fear and pain and loneliness and happiness and joy and beauty and bugs and cold and frustration and heat and anything else that came my way. And it was in the process of acceptance that the negatives lost their power over me and the positives became my motivators. This is what I want to share with each and every one of you that the success here is about the lessons learned along the journey. When I reached Canada, 60 days, 17 hours, 12 minutes, and four mountain lions after I left Mexico, I had achieved my goal of hiking the trail faster than anyone else ever had. But the real success were those lessons, the acceptance, the mindfulness, the learning to be present in the moment. And I can guarantee you that it is not easy and it is not painless to take control of your own destiny. But having the courage to write your own fairy tale each and every day is what defines success to me. And that is what I find makes life worth living. Thank you.